Hi everybody. All right, it's that time of year again where we need to repress some of the stuff in our kit that has been used up with the kit pack and fixie system. Um, this time last year, last winter, I repressed my entire kit. There are videos previously where you can see that I was doing that. And so now I've been using it for a year and things are starting to run out. I have repressed a couple of things in that time that may like one or two have cracked, but my entire kit, 140 eyeshadows, 40 blushes, 20 powders have all stayed really intact. I have refilled a couple of powders because um, I do find that I go through the powders quite a lot. Um, but now we're going to sort of refill most of the stuff now. So I'm going to do it a little bit differently this time. I've got this little contraption here. I bought this on eBay for like $7. And I think it's for like grinding herbs and tobacco. But it's this little, it's got this little thing here. I'm not going to use that. The next layer is a little sieve. So that's when I'm going to be pushing some of the eyeshadows through. And then at the bottom here, there's a chain bar where you would catch it. I'm not using that and I'm not using this. I'm just going to use this. So I have done one eyeshadow. I probably won't use this for all of my powders because um, it is quite tedious and I don't feel that you necessarily need it. But baked eyeshadows and baked blushes and baked powders they are really hard to grind fine and if you don't grind them fine it's like a really chunky press and I find that they want to crumble and it's not good in your kit so powders like this really need to be either put through a coffee grinder or some sort of way to really grind them up as fine as you can so I have done one here. So this is this Napoleon Blush Patrol. And this is a really, like the press that I did the first time around with this last year, this is pretty chunky. And this guy wanted to stay chunky most of the time. Um, so now we're gonna do one more. So let's show you a before, which one should we do? So this is a MAC Petal Power. So you can kind of see how chunky the surface is there. Um, this has stayed as one whole piece in my kit, but we're gonna repress this with the little grinder and get this much finer for this year. I have got my little blush here and I have found my MAC spare one. So a little bit's tipped out. I'm gonna use my spatula to get a little bit of the remnants. This is a clean, fresh spray bottle. And so I'm using the end of it to pretty much just press it through. And you'll notice it's quite tedious. And so, yeah, I wouldn't be doing this for every single one, but the chunky baked powders definitely press really, really well when you do it like this. And so, please excuse my husband gibbering. He works from home. So, a little mound has come out from just doing that. And you can see there's still quite a lot in there. So it is quite tedious. Give it a little whack. It's a little bit like making a cake, I'm not gonna lie. Push that over to the side. And a little bit more. I'm going to do a fraction more from the pan just to add to it. All right, so it looks pretty good. Made a giant mess. This needs to be cleaned. I like to grab a antibacterial wipe. Not a wet one. I would probably say something that's a little bit more. I mean, these are... Good old strike. I think these are from Aldi or Woolworths. So I like to use something fairly heavy duty and really, really scrub the crap out of that. You'll notice there are like little chunks that like to get into the corner. You can kind of poke those out with a mascara wand. Sometimes it's almost impossible to get out the chunks from the corner, which isn't a problem. Oops, see you later, I'm making it even more dirty. Then I use alcohol and I basically just drench it and then use a tissue and then wipe it again. So 
the reason I like to go over it with the alcohol is because I really want to make sure, obviously it's going to be sterilized because this is cleaning the absolute living daylights out of it, but I really want to make sure that it's not greasy and there's no oil residue left over from the wipe because that could affect the press. So you want it squeaky clean. A new one of these. Put your mold down. This little guy goes in the mold. Yep. Now, I like to... This is the fixie, which you very much need. I like to, you have to shake the crap out of it. I like to spray the lightest misting in the bottom and then pour it in. You kind of want the powder to about halfway with these blush sizes. They're all different. Like I know that with the powders, the longer ones, you need maybe half, more than halfway. With the eyeshadows, less than halfway. These ones are about halfway. Shake, shake, shake. Another very light mist on the top, letting it land on it. We put the lid on and we'll go press. I always take the palette over to the press so that I don't risk dropping it. Push down at the bottom under here. Rest that on top. A cloth, because this is hard on your hands. And then just hold it for about 10 seconds. And I like to turn it, making sure that the base is definitely touching on the Arbor Press. Sometimes the Arbor Press can force the base of the pans to pop out. So you always want to make sure that, that wall around the pan, the mold is kind of touching the Arbor Press. Yay. All right. I like to give it a little wiggle. Oh, perfect. Look how clean that is. So good. I like to tip it upside down. Give it a whack. Oh, yeah. That is bloody perfect. I mean, you saw how chunky that was last time. And I remember when I pressed it the first time around, it still, you could see the chunk on the top. Whereas that is so fine. And then this would just be a boss baby in your kit. This won't be breaking. This won't be chunking. This won't be like shards can sometimes come off when it's a shitty press, but that's perfect. I like to give it a little bit of a wipe, making sure there's no residue on it. And... So good. Let's do some more. So in between presses, I like to use a disinfecting wipe and wipe over the mold. Try not to get these molds really wet all the time. I did a nasty thing where I put, uh, I have two packets of molds here. I have old molds and I have a bag here of new molds from the artist arsenal. And um, I did the stupid thing and put one of the molds in the dishwasher, thinking that would be a really great way to sterilize it. And it warped it, so I had to buy a second packet. Yay. Um, so they don't like being heated too much, so I wouldn't be using hot water on them. And I tend to not use water on it to wash it. And I would use that dish liquid, like an anti-greasing dish liquid. Um, and I would do it at the end of a massive session of pressing. But in between colors, a wipe, is fine and then you're going to want to go over that with a tissue just to make sure that there's no residue and then the same thing with this guy you could obviously wash him under the water I'm not going to I'm just going to give it a wipe with a disinfecting wipe obviously I'm doing all blush colors so they're all really really similar I will say it is unavoidable that this is messy work you're going to get eyeshadows everywhere um, as long as everything's sterilized then it's fine but Trying to clean up perfectly and make everything amazing in between is just impossible. I will say the most annoying thing about repressing is this. Is having to go through and find everything that you need to repress. So if you haven't stored everything correctly, this is a bitch. I don't like the way I stored it. I need to redo this. Anyway, side note. This is NARS Bumpy Ride. Now these are like a regular kind of more matte standard blush. They're not baked. They're not different in any way, shape or form. So I'm just going to grind these up normally without using the sieve. Alrighty. So I'm not using the sieve. I'm just scraping out the blush straight onto the paper.
Kesian. Old blush. do about that and see what this looks like so you'll notice with these more matte ones the minute you start stabbing them they kind of start crumbling apart and they're really easy to get a bit finer so you don't necessarily need the sieve and this method is a hell of a lot quicker than using the sieve anyway so I do find that this method of pressing it with a mascara wand is the best way to crumble it down. So I'm basically looking for any chunks and I want all the chunks gone. New paper, mold, pan, fixie. and repress holding down the base lining it up holding the back of the machine Always put my finger underneath here to make sure that it's not going to fall out the bottom just in case. Perfect. Look at that. Look at that. Lovely. And he goes here. In between these NARS eyeshadows, I've got four of them to do. I'm just using a tissue without the wet wipe because they're all very, very similar colors and they're all matte. So I don't need to worry about flecks of shimmer or anything like that. Now, this one here is Deep Throat by NARS, and I'm gonna use the sieve to see if that makes it any quicker. I'm gonna call it and say that that's quicker. I just wish that this little grinder was bigger, that's all would be a lot easier. It's actually quite deceiving. When I bought it on eBay, I actually thought it would be like that big, quite big. It had the measurements on it, but obviously it pays attention to these things. And when it arrived, I was like, oh my gosh, like a baby, like a baby grinder or baby herbs.
This one. Okay, how does this look? That's awesome. That stick? No, no sticking. Yoink, yoink. That's a great press. So I think probably the strainer is the quickest and easiest, I think. Yay. There's really no difference between the two. That's what I did without it, and that's with this the sieve. I don't know. So the eye they look exactly the same. Whichever one you vibe. Just so that you can see how they wear after a year of use, you know with a traditional powder you get a hole in the middle is generally how it wears now in saying that the eyeshadows let me show you an eyeshadow here's my eyeshadows so you can see here one that i use a lot of this guy here you can see how there's a hole starting in the middle that seems to be how the eyeshadows wear so that size but these powders and the same thing happens with the face powders they tend to just get shallower it's quite strange. You don't usually get a hole in the middle. They just very evenly. So like, I mean, that's like a, a third full, if that. And the lower they get, the more of a risk they have of cracking, which is which is why you need to repress, like not very often, but every now and then. So face powders. So you'll see here, I mean, this happens with regular powders anyway. You'll see this one, it got low and it started to crack and I kind of lost a chunk of it. Um, so yeah, you can see some of these, they're wearing very evenly straight across. So I need to repress these as well because this, these are gonna start to crack if I don't repress them. Side note, forgot to say, wear a mask. This stuff is so dusty and it gets in your nose. It gets, you can feel it on your lips as the time goes on when you're pressing more. Wear a mask. Done. So I've repressed nine of the top ones and it's taken me about an hour. To do nine, I had a couple of troubles. Uh, there was a Milani baked blush that pressed perfectly the first time I did it a year ago. And then I tried to like crush it up and redo it again. And I could not get it to press. It just kept cracking and didn't want to stay. And after like the third time, I just went stop it because there was another one that I had, a Smith & Colt one that I really wanted to put in there anyway. So yay, all good. And now we'll do our powders. All right, these are my face powders. Uh, at the moment, I've got Studio Fix MAC across the top, which I'm going to leave. And down here is a bit of a shiitake show. That's a blot powder by MAC. And then these guys need to be repressed. This is a Charlotte Tilbury, and I've got none left, and I don't think I'm going to replace it. Uh, this is a Charlotte Tilbury airbrush in the light. I have more of that, so I'm going to repress it and add more. This is a Jouer powder that is like two colors mixed in together, so he's on his last legs. And then I have these three SLA powders that I have never repressed. So I'm slightly worried. Um, the lady who sells them in Australia is like, they're not going to press. I think they're going to press. Because they're very similar to Studio Fix. They're a lot finer, but they're definitely like quite stable. So I'm going to whack those in there. Let's go. Now, the best way to get these stickers off the bottom of these pans, if you're changing the colors, is hot water and you scrape them off with a palette knife. If you really scrape hard at these, there's a chance that you might warp the pan and bend the metal, which you don't want to do. So I find that the hot water just dislodges the glue at the back of the label and it's super easy to change. And try not to burn your fingers like I am. Make sure that you relabel them if you need to relabel any definitely before you repress it's a lot harder to do this afterwards
it can be always really nerve wracking when you're repressing something that you've never done before because you just never quite know how much you need in there. And I could see from pushing it through the sieve is how fine this powder is, is it's so easy to push through here. Generally things that are finer in powder press flatter. So you tend to need to put more in. That seems to be the vibe that I've had so far. I might be wrong. We'll soon find out. Unfortunately. All right, moment of truth. This is so scary. I hate doing this. Hmm, tiny bit on the top of here. So I'm just gonna get that rid of that. That's pretty good. That is a happy press. I can safely say that that worked. To store the powder, you put the remnants in the compact and just close it up and store it flat somewhere. All done. Yay, repressed. They pressed quite easily. We'll see how they hold up. Um, yay, so all fresh. 10 powders in one little palette. I still can't believe it. This is just the best stuff.